Business Exit Planning for Amazon FBA. You're running successful Amazon FBA business and you would like to sell it. This video might be useful for you because we are talking to, uh, Dano, uh, to Dano Falk who built up Amazon business and managed to sell it. He's sharing his takeaways, how to deal with the brokers, what is the process with the buyers and a uh, few other interesting tips you might learn. And if you like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe below to the YouTube channel of Orange Click, click the notification bell. And uh, here we talk to different Amazon experts, Amazon software providers, service providers, and see you in the conversation. So hello, Dano. Nice to meet you. Hi, Agustas. Thanks for having me here. And before we deep dive into your story, I also want to introduce Lisette, who will be part of this conversation. Lisette works with uh, different Amazon stores. And uh, today in this video, we will talk about Dano's exit, how he managed to build Amazon business and sell it successfully, hopefully. So Dano, could you tell us a little bit of backstory, where you're coming from, how you started to do uh, to sell on Amazon and how did it, mm. oh, the whole process happened? Mm. Yeah, I'm tempted to do the long shot, but yeah, I, I was born in Ukraine. Um, but yeah, I'm going to skip the middle part. So I grew up in Germany, actually, and I came to Malaysia in 2011. And uh, for many reasons, I like the endless summer. I like riding my bike. So I was living here uh, and I started my Amazon business in 2014 as a consequence of my previous activities as an entrepreneur, web designer and marketer. Uh, I thought, well, I could just, you know, merge my all my skills into this nicely and grow with it and do something new and exciting. Uh, and it was exciting. Yeah, the, I cannot complain about being bored. I had everything between uh, amazing sales days and uh, months and uh, being shut, shut down and suspended for no reason and sitting there and shaking and wondering if I will ever get my account back or not. So it's been an interesting journey for five years. And uh, last year, September, I sold my business. And uh, yeah, so and I will be happy to share how this works to help other people, other sellers to, you know, to make smart decisions and to get the best possible exit. Perfect. Um, yeah, I think uh, I, uh, you told us that you have a few slides. I think it could be uh, yeah. really useful. Yeah, why yeah. not? Let's, let's show yeah, some let's slides. Do, uh, let's Just, see uh, what yeah some notes for the amazon sellers yeah it's just uh, yeah just like some side notes um yeah so uh, this is all like my experience so how is price determined i mean we can read up a lot of things about this but uh, uh number one is obviously net profit um and and guess what it's not revenue <laughs> so yeah it's profit so all the seller uh, the buyer wants to see and the broker in the first place the only question he will ask is how much did you make in the past year so they want to see how was this profit developing over the past years and that's the second point the progression so you know if you make one thousand dollars a month uh, and it's been the same last year um, um, it's it's actually better to have five hundred dollars last year and have one thousand this year so it's it's good to see a progression in the in the profit then the third thing is just the diversification so uh, how future safe is this business meaning is everything in amazon uh, or do we do we have like uh, shopify do we have other stores outside of amazon do we have other channels uh, do we have multiple products uh, do we maybe even have several brands so the more diversified the better uh, the more sops and team we have the better so um, how easy is it to take over and run this business um, that's the, every buyer will ask this question i mean do i have to sit there and work uh, 40 hours a week or can i just take it and plug it into you know into my system and just does it will it run by itself and then another one a big one is trademarks and patents and this also goes under you know protecting the business having trademarks in place having patents in place makes a huge difference so if you look looking for a big uh, multiple and for a like optimal exit i would really uh, focus on these points and make them work as well as possible um, talking yeah. about uh, sops uh, we have recently quite few videos talking about uh, how to systemize <coughs> and build businesses and sell uh, what can you tell I like I'm technical so could you share like how you were building this SOPs what uh, tools did you use I'm actually really bad at building SOPs 
I, I had a few. I had one. I mean, at that time, I had a um, um, logistics VA in sitting in US, um, and, and she was receiving returns and selling them as used and doing inspections and all that. And I had SOPs for her. So how to do this thing, how to receive something, how to check the products, you know, what, what is a faulty product, what is a good product, which one is fit to sell. And so I had all these, but they were like simple written documents. They were not fancy uh, apps Google. or what, it was just Google Drive. Google. Okay. It was so all on Google Drive documents, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> SOP, those who don't know, is standard operating procedure. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. It's just a point by point, like do this and then do that. That's that's all it is. Lisa? Yeah, I had a quick question. Uh, around the time that you were selling your business, how much time did it take to manage it, uh, let's say, on a weekly basis? Um, I was uh, quite busy with it. Uh, I, I was. Uh, it was my full time uh, work. And I'm hesitant to say job because it's supposed to be a business. But yeah, I mean, I was not very good at removing myself from the business. I think that was one of my weak points. I did not get to the point where I could actually remove myself and, and like work on the business. So I was still working in the business. So it was a full time occupation. Yeah. So how, how big was your team back then? You said you had one VA for logistics, but were, was there somebody for customer support or PPC or did yeah, you do I everything had, yourself? Um, I did uh, everything, marketing, I did myself because I consider that to be my strong side. Uh, I'm also a graphic designer, so I created all the listings and did all the images and all the Photoshop stuff. Uh, I forced myself to write the listings but I did hire people here and there, and I had a support VA in the Philippines and one logistics VA in the US. Okay, very interesting. So uh, actually, I think you will talk about mistakes, which I mean, I can imagine you said you were not very good at SOPs and uh, systemizing. So this reduced your multiple by which you got the offer yeah. from the brokers, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Are you yeah. You want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, so I mean, if, let me see. Did I prepare more about what I did? So uh, yeah, we can. Basically, I think my biggest mistake was I was simply absorbed by operations. I was stuck in like doing, running everything by myself because I'm not very good at letting go, and I'm not very good at like let people do stuff because I always think, oh, you know, before I explain all this, I rather just get it done myself. Uh, which might work in the short term, but it's a very bad idea in the long run because you end up doing everything yourself and you end up not having the time to actually build. So what you should do, what I believe is build these systems. So this is like, like a, a lesson to my uh, previous self. Uh, diversify as much as you can. So uh, diversify in products, obviously. Diversify in channels. Uh, use channels outside Amazon as good as you can. And then, I mean, growing the business, yeah, I mean, that goes without saying, but uh, if you don't have a, a profit curve that is going up, I think you should not even start uh, like approaching brokers because they don't want to see businesses which don't grow. So it's kind of a must, you know, to have a growing business to, to sell it at any reasonable price. Uh, what you should do is automate, you know, talking about SOPs, talking about building teams. Uh, so if you manage to remove yourself from the business and let's say you only have to work two hours a day on the, on this business, I think that's when you've done a good job. Um, and then you should start talking to brokers as early as possible. So uh, this process can take a long time and some people can go, you know, they can be you know, like on your side for a year or so. And then they can tell you one would be a good time to actually, you know, make the move and, and list uh, your business on their platform. Because, you know, and, and you, they can also give you valuable feedback, like which, which are the weak points, which are the things you could fix to improve your, your multiple. So, um, and, uh, and then also by, by scanning brokers, it's also very important. There are, there are so many FBA business brokers outside, and I had offers between multiple of 20 and 28 which, you know, makes a big difference. So, you know. Can you explain 20 of what from what? It's a monthly profit. Monthly profit. The multiples are how, how businesses are evaluated is by the month, by the so-called multiple. Uh, and the, the multiples, uh, the number means how many times your monthly profit, which is mostly the average of the last year. If let's say you made 100,000 in profit last year, 
so the monthly profit would be okay let's go with 120 so it's 10,000 and then the multiple would be times 20 so you would get uh, 200,000 if you get the 20 20 multiple if you get a 28 it would be uh, 280,000 no? mm -hmm. so that's how the multiple plays out so it makes a you know it, it makes a big difference whether you get your more towards 20 or more towards 30 or even more and you sold it with which month multiple uh, with 28 oh quite high yeah yeah it was quite a good yeah it was a good multiple and i was quite surprised by this offer and i was happy to find that uh, i worked with quiet light uh, brokerage and uh, they gave me a very good deal yeah i have so how much that. time it w did it take for you from the day you decided you will sell your business uh, until the day <coughs> you actually sold it i think it was a, like a nine month process altogether i mean there was like you know there's a time when you first think oh should i sell my business and then and then you think oh my god i mean this is like my baby and i'm you know this is what i do and i put so much work and and how you know to give it away so there's this emotional pain first yeah you, you kind of have to get yourself to the point like say okay let's try this let's see you know like calm down you know it's gonna be okay there will be a life after this uh, yeah so that's also something quite substantial which took me a while you know to to simply kind of uh, separate myself and to let go um, yeah and then I started reaching out to brokers and there were different discussions and uh, I also prepared I think a broker list here yeah uh, so there are quite a few people you can actually talk to and then they will give you all kind of different offers some have like the like a fixed rate some I think like the standard is to get 10 percent out of the deal which can be quite painful but yeah at the same time you know that's they make it happen so there's nothing to complain about and then uh, there are like also like this fixed fees where you have a minimum fixed fee uh, at, at the beginning and then plus uh, you know a share of the deal so there are all kind of different <coughs> settings so uh, how did, yeah how did you choose the broker like you talked with all these 10 probably companies right not i didn't talk to all of them but i think i i i, I talked definitely um to uh, quiet light and to um, empire flippers man empire, empire okay. flippers yeah because i know them personally uh yeah so empire flippers were like my first choice and we did uh, have a discussion and then things didn't quite work the way i wanted it and uh, and then i met this guy uh, from quiet light and and we had you know Sometimes, you know, things just move and they don't move. Sometimes it's about money, but sometimes it's just about the chemistry. Also, how you, f you feel like uh, you feel like in good hands, you know, some this can also like matter a lot. Uh, and yeah, so I just uh, ended up the, the going moving forward with quiet light. Mm -hmm. And what was your so you OK, you didn't talk to too many, but if someone wants to sell, what would you suggest in terms of looking for a broker? Should they ask for recommendations first from other friends or like? <clears throat> what yeah, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a tricky question because the, it, so many things depend on the broker. I mean, eventually um, the, you need to talk to someone who has decent traffic, who has, a, you know, the big amount of buyers. So, you know, if you talk to a very small platform, they only have a few potential customers and even they are the nicest people on the planet, but they probably won't find a client for you because the platform is too small. That is just not enough traffic. And, uh, and then you're stuck with them because there's always exclusive, you know. So if you're listing, uh, if you're listed with one broker, you cannot at the same time list with another broker. There is no such thing. So you have to kind of marry the guy for this time being and and yeah and you have to make a good decision and and really think uh, you know and get as, as much information as you can about seeing like the deal flow on their site um, like how many fba businesses have they sold in the last month so is, is there like a reasonable amount of deal flow going on and then see what other terms and conditions so are they willing to work with you in the first place because some of them just say no for whatever reason uh, and then see if they're willing to then then see like what would be the conditions to work with them okay but what if uh, a seller today thinks that okay i want to sell my business uh, what are the documents the calculation uh, <clears throat> they should prepare uh, before contacting a broker uh, they sh i mean the broker will mostly uh, brokers are quite well prepared for this kind of stuff so they will have uh, uh, all these procedures in place 
And, and some of them will allow you to upload, to create a Google Sheet with your monthly profits. And they will normally, they will ask for like a monthly profit sheet for the last three years. So that's what I no normally want to see. So, uh, and some of them will accept, you know, the one that you create yourself and some and others will simply ask for access in your uh, seller account and then they will dig out the numbers themselves because that's how they do it. So, uh, yeah, so there are these several ways, but uh, you don't have to prepare a lot of documents. So basically what you need is you need to show them what, what it is you're doing, you know, your products, and then uh, you need to provide the numbers for the last three years. These are the two things that you have to you need to have in place before you start talking to them. So basically you have to know your numbers. Of course. Yeah. And it took, actually, it was not easy, you know, to dig it through all this stuff and to see the sales, the returns, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, it, it was, I, I'm not the Google spreadsheet guy, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, it was quite a journey to get all these numbers together, but yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do, but it, it becomes like a part-time job, you know, as soon as you are involved with this, it takes quite some time, you know, to get all this stuff done and to get all the spreadsheets together and and then the trademarks, you know, and yeah, all this stuff, it's, uh, it's okay. can be quite intensive. So broker is one thing and after broker comes the buyer when they match you. So oh, how yeah, does yeah. it look like? How fun is this journey? That, yeah, that can be also uh, any kind of experience. So I had, uh, I think I had three, four, five, uh, like calls with potential buyers. And uh, so the way it works is uh, uh, you have a tree, uh, how you call this? Not a tree sum. It's, it's a three people call, uh, like a conference call with the broker, the buyer and me. And sometimes the buyer comes with a partner. So you have this little conference call. Uh, and then, uh, <clears throat> so they ask all kinds of questions and it can be like, yeah, <laughs> they want to know every single number. And you know, you don't know these people. So it's weird. It's like you're standing naked on a marketplace, you know, and people can just, you know, like, like point fingers and say, hey, but why is this like that? And, you know, and what about this product? And is and so they will ask you quite a few questions, which is understandable, but it's it can be a bit of an awkward process. And then you go to the next stage where they actually, so after this first call, they will come back to the broker and say like, uh, yes or no. And, they, and those who say, yes, we want to move forward, then you go into the next round, which is then the so-called signing LOI, the letter of intent. <clears throat> so as soon as this thing is signed, uh, you, uh, it's, it's kind of exclusive. So then the listing is taken down from the, pro uh, <clears throat> from the platform. So it's, it's not available more for other buyers. So this, it's kind of reserved by this buyer and the buyer kind of uh, he uh, complies and uh, agrees to, you know, to go to move forward and to do all the due diligence. So the next thing is you give him access to your seller account. So now he can really look at all your numbers, at all your listings, all your whatever. And that's when you, when I felt even more slightly uncomfortable when I knew like, okay, so this guy can, uh, technically you could just walk away, you know, he could just look into every single corner of my business and decide, oh, I don't want this and just walk away. He could do that. So this uh, kind of uh, scenario was a bit scary, but yeah, eventually that's how it works. So then you come to the next stage, which is the purchase agreement. And that's where things are actually happening. So as soon as this agreement is signed, um, there is a number there. So the purchase price is defined. Everything is clear. <clears throat> And the next step is actually for the to hand over the business. But this document, this PA or purchase agreement can be quite a beast. And, uh, you know, my buyer had was in US. He had a lawyer and all that. And I was sitting alone here. I didn't have a lawyer and I had to kind of make sense of all these chapters and all this lawyers English. And that was no fun, honestly. And I did overlook a few things. Like one of the things like, which I highlighted here is the, the due diligence time. I mean, this can be really a screw over if, if somewhere in the fine print it says, so after passing the business and after depositing the, the, the signs into the, the funds into escrow, uh, there is this time where the buyer has another period where he can look, uh, do his due diligence. So he can look at everything in the business and he can check if it's as promised. And this can take like months, you know. And uh, yeah, and if I did another contract, I would make sure that this time is cut short because, you know, to, uh, technically he could delay the payout 
uh, for for three months and just keep on like playing around with the business and after three months he could find something which it was not as described and uh, kind of revert the process and even if he doesn't find anything i mean waiting for three months for your money is no fun so this is one of the you know sticky points which i found um, but yeah, the sort of just to complete the loop here, the process you sign the PA and then the money goes into the escrow account. Uh, and then uh, the, the business, as soon as the money is in the escrow account, the entire business is being passed to the buyer. So he gets the keys, he gets all access, all passwords. The bank account is uh, reassigned. Uh, and uh, so the business is being handed over. And after the due diligence period, that's when the buyer gives his final OK to the escrow people and then they actually release the money and that's what happened yeah i think the entire process took about three months mm -hmm. oh no two or three months yeah just just negotiating with this one buyer getting all the documents in place and having his done his due diligence and he was honestly he was very fair my buyer he actually didn't you know extend here after i think after one week he released the funds so that was very kind of him but uh, yeah so this is the entire process nice and uh it was a, a little bit of a journey i guess lisa do you have any yeah. questions <laughs> yeah i wanted to ask uh, once now you have sold your first business uh, have you thought of uh, starting another one? Oh yeah i mean i had businesses kind of on the side all this while but uh, i quite immediately after that i embarked in my agency business which is dev device right now so this is what i kind of uh, had going on the side a bit and which has now become my full-time thing uh, besides other things I'm also doing but uh, yeah and I also still considering to create an uh, another FBA business uh, but the agency part is uh, right now it's too uh, time consuming and um, I'm kind of completely involved in this right now so I don't have the time to start another FBA business at this moment but uh, I would not exclude that so it would be also a waste, you know, to not apply my knowledge and to just create another FBA business. Awesome. Uh, is there anything I, I, we missed? Uh, yeah. Um, did we miss anything? Let me see. Uh, no, I, I think. No. Uh, we, okay, we, we, yeah, yeah I so, think... uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned the whole trademark and, and thing. So this yeah, is. Let's uh, talk about yeah. this a little bit. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, one thing I cannot stress enough is uh, something which has been was a very difficult part of this transaction was the trademark thing um, because I had a trademark rejected in the US and I had a trademark accepted in the EU and in Europe, which was good enough for, for you know, for my Amazon business. So I had uh, my brand registry, everything. Amazon accepts the European trademark registration, but the, the buyer, he wanted to have the US trademark and this process is going on until now. So a significant amount of the buyer's price is still held in the escrow account because until now this whole trademark thingy is going on and it's not finished even though it's kind of accepted but it's not registered. So one thing, one piece of advice would be to just get this whole trademark and patent stuff in place as soon as possible and to, yeah, and to just have all this in place, even though your uh, EU IPO, the Euro European trademark works well to run the business, but the buyer might not like it. So um, I would start quite early to, to, you know, to register your trademark in the US if you don't have that, uh, because this process can take, you know, up to a year just to complete. Perfect. Thank you very much, Dana. So if people, for some reason, wants to get in touch with you, <laughs> yeah. uh, what, yeah, what, <laughs> what reason could that be? But yes, I, don't know, I, yeah. also think, I mean, there is a possibility people would like to get in touch. So yeah, actually, uh, I, will, yeah, I think we will put in, it should be in this corner. We'll see, we'll put a link yeah. to, uh, to the another video where uh, Dana is presenting a system which you can implement uh, in, uh, with many chat, uh, Facebook chat and Facebook ads. And this system will help you rank your products. So check out for this video also in the description. And uh, yeah, also this is the Dano's yeah, contact. Yeah, very simple, right? Dano and Dev Device, yeah. What does it mean, Dev Device? 
Uh, well, Dev is Dano Edward Falk. This is my full name, actually. And I always, my all my companies had some kind of Dev in it. Uh, it's not because I hear badly, but because it's yeah. just my initials. So yeah, so I started with Dev Design in Munich, and now it's Dev Device. So let's see what's the next Dev. But it's always okay. something Dev. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you very much, Dano. Thank you, Lisette. Bye, bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Good day. Bye. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video with Dano and please don't forget to subscribe below to the Orange Click uh, YouTube channel and click the notification bell as well because here we talk to different Amazon specialists, Amazon service providers and software creators so that you can grow your business and be successful as well. Bye bye.